Welcome aboard Just Jets with your captain, Matt O'Leary. Buckle up and enjoy the ride. Hey, what's going on? I'm Matt O'Leary, back with episode number 76. I am excited to get into this episode as we are breaking down some big storylines going into training camp. We are getting into Brian Poole signing with the Saints and what that means for the New York Jets. And lastly, of course, your voicemails and answering any questions you may have. But before all of that, a word from our sponsors over at Manscaped. You got the Olympics, Euros, baseball, major championships, and concerts are all in this summer. You know what isn't, though? A wild and hairy bush. You got to take care of that. Tame your pubes with help from our friends at Manscaped. The leaders in below-the-waist grooming. Their fourth generation. Not one, two, three, but fourth. The brand new... Lawnmower 4.0. If an athlete treats their body like royalty, why not treat your pubes like Olympic gold, fellas, right? Join the 2 million men worldwide who use Manscaped by going to manscaped.com with promo code JETS20. That's JETS20 for 20% off and free shipping at Manscaped. Go buy yourself something nice. You deserve it. So let's get into today's episode. Like I said, a lot to get into. Training camp is going to be getting underway. And really, let's talk about some key storylines that I'll be looking for heading into training camp and the preseason kind of all, you know, going to shake out in the next few weeks here. So first and foremost, let's talk offensive line. And I think the one thing that is up in the air as a question mark is who is going to start at right guard. Now, if I had to bet on it, I think it would be Greg Van Roten. And I think at the end of the day, he wins the job. But does someone like Cam Clark come out of nowhere and step up? Is Alex Lewis someone who they see as a starter? I mean, he played pretty well in 2019. Is he going to be the guy in 2021? I bet probably not. I'm surprised he hasn't been cut already. You have Dan Feeney, who, while has an awesome mullet, great mustache, is not starting material. Um, and that's probably it for the, for that right guard spot. But if I had to bet on the likelihood of who that is going to be, I would imagine it's going to be the Long Island native, Greg Van Roten. Uh, I think he wins the job. And I fully anticipated to be from left to right, Becked in Elijah Vera Tucker, Connor McGovern, who I think will be much better this year, Greg Van Roten, and Morgan Moses at right tackle. George Fant, I almost said Greg Fant, George Fant coming off the bench and playing swing tackle I think is a a good role for him. He's an expensive swing tackle, but I I think he's going to be good in that role and maybe even a little bit of tight end, not going out and catching as a tight end, but as a blocking tight end, something he did in Seattle for a, a long time. Cornerback room is the next thing that I'm looking at, number two on my list. How does that shake out? We, we know for the most part that Bryce Hall is going to be a starter. Other than that, way up in the air. Bless Austin could be a starter. He could be cut. Like That is the, the variant on these guys. Do I think he's going to get cut? No. Uh, I, I wouldn't necessarily bet on it, but it's pretty much the point I wanted to make is wide open. Bless Austin could be the guy. Isaiah Dunn, who they signed as an undrafted free agent, could be the guy. Maybe it's one of the two guys they drafted who's you know most likely going to be a corner in Pinnock and Eccles. Uh, maybe Michael Carter, the second place slot. That could be a slot option. Or uh, maybe you have Javelin Guidry playing the slot. Eccles can move inside with his lack of size and speed, maybe. So there's so many storylines in that position to begin with, and it doesn't look like they're going to add a veteran. Like Steven Nelson just went and signed with the Eagles, I believe for a one year deal, 4 million bucks, not not too much over there, but that how that room factors out and what really happens at that cornerback room, I think is going to be a huge storyline and something that I'll absolutely be looking for this, you know, this training camp and, and this, you know, ramp up period. Then I have Elijah Moore because I think he is going to be a training camp darling. I really think he's going to be talked about a ton, and, and I get it. I mean, th- there's a good reason for it because he's a really good player. But at the same time, does that push maybe a Jamison Crowder off the roster? And what do I necessarily mean by off the roster? Not that he's going to be cut or anything like that, but do you then flip him for a mid-round draft pick for a needy team like, let's say, the Saints, who's going to be without Michael Thomas for a while? Or maybe another, there's another injury around the league. Or maybe you keep him. Like Again, I'm not opposed to keeping him on this roster, even with Elijah Moore here. But I think we see a lot of more 
in the in training camp. I think we see a lot of him in the preseason. And he's a dynamic player, a player the Jets haven't had something like that in a very long time. So uh, it's easy to fall in love with his skill set. So I think with his just natural and raw ability, he's going to be someone who's talked about a lot in training camp, and I can't wait to see more of him. Chris Herndon, is he going to start at tight end? This is going to be Croft. What the heck are they going to do at the tight end position, I think is something that we're going to need to take a look at. Just because it's... It's so much up in the air. Uh, Croft a few years ago was better as a receiver, now more of a blocking tight end. Uh, Herndon really flashed in his rookie year a few years ago, but hasn't done much of anything in the last two years. Maybe this is finally the year post Gase. That's what I'm hoping for. I, I think ta- the talent is there. Uh, we just got to see if he you know, puts his head into it. And Yeah, he fumbles a little bit, but we'll see if he's able to turn around post Gase. He is one of the guys on the roster that I bet would have the best chance to do it in terms of the skill position players. Like I don't necessarily anticipate the Michael P Ryan turning into an absolute star. I don't think Jameson Crowder is going to the next level. Mims. I wasn't, I thought he performed well actually with gay. So I don't think that he really, you know, applies to that. Ty Johnson maybe could be another one. I think that's fair. Ty Johnson and Chris Herndon stock up with this system. I think that's probably pretty fair. And my last thing that I'm going to be looking at, we're going to be looking at a ton, really, but the last thing I wanted to talk about at the start here is if they'll need a backup quarterback or not. And I think right now, you know, we're operating on the assumption that Zach Wilson's going to get signed and be here pretty soon, which I think is, you know, going to happen in the next couple of days here. But James Morgan and Mike White are the other quarterbacks on the roster. So I think we'll see early in the preseason if the Jets are going to need to bring in a you know veteran backup here. I'd feel a lot more comfortable with that. Maybe they feel comfortable with James Morgan. Don't know, but uh, we'll find out in training camp and the first couple of preseason games who the Jets' backup quarterback is going to be and if they need a backup. So a lot to look forward to there. And then just briefly here on losing Brian Poole, it became you know pretty obvious here that he wasn't going to return to the New York Jets, but really, really solid player over the last couple of years. A 77-1 pro football focus grade last year in 2020, 79-5 coverage grade the year prior, 79 PFF grade, and 80 coverage grade. He's a really good slot corner who the Jets got two good years uh, you know, on the cheap. A very sizable upgrade over Buster Screen, who really just had one okay year and then didn't really do too much else uh, for the New York Jets after that. But one of the better finds, really, for this Jets team was was Brian Poole. I thought he was a really, really solid guy. You didn't have to worry about him. Well, it wasn't really going to give you a ton of penalties. He was just, you know, solid in coverage. And it's a big ask for a, a really young and inexperienced guy to come in and play slot corner. That's a hard position to come in and play in the NFL. And losing Brian Poole is going to hurt a little bit. But in this secondary, they're going with youth. That's their plan. They want to go with youth. Uh, they think their front four is going to be able to get home and make life easier for their secondary. And if that's the case, then maybe Javelin Gidry can hold it down or Michael Carter II can hold it down. We'll, we'll see what happens here, but it, it, it is. I mean, we can't act like it's not a big loss losing Brian Poole. And again, we've, we've known this for a while. Like the all signs pointed to Brian Poole not returning. And, you know, he signs with the Saints on a one year deal and he'll probably play pretty well there on a, on a solid defense. So. Good on Brian Poole, who probably most likely be on a competitive team this year. We'll see if they make the playoffs without Drew Brees. Um, and obviously, we just talked about them losing Michael Thomas for a little bit here, but still a solid team over there in New Orleans. So uh, with that, we can get into your voicemails now, and we'll start with Nick in Atlanta, who wants to talk about Sheldon Rankins. Hey, Matt. It's Nick from Atlanta. What up? So I just want to call in, ask you about a few things. Uh, the first thing I want to ask you about Tell me if I'm being a homer, complete biased uh, fan right here. Okay. I really think that Sheldon Rankins was an underrated part Agreed. of Joe Douglas' free agency. Agree. I just think this guy is an absolutely elite defensive tackle if he's healthy, which is a big if, I, I agree. But I really think if this guy's healthy, oh, my God, next to Quinn Williams, I really think he will be a, a surprise addition or, a, you know, surprise positive uh, for this team that, that I think is getting a little bit overlooked. But tell me if I'm being a complete homer and, you know, if he signed with the Patriots, and be like, oh, that's a waste of money. <laughs> Who knows? I don't really know because he never was really on my radar going into free agency. But the more I just read about him, the more I hear about his explosiveness, I just think he's a great athlete. 
The second thing is okay. I kind of agree more with you of a fun first. question. Ooh. So I like fun. Like let's say you're playing, you know, fantasy football and <clears throat> you're just you're only allowed to pick Jets players. Let's say, you know, round one, you're only allowed to pick Jets players. But who's the first player you're taking? Is it Zach Wilson? Is it Denzel Mims? Is it Michael Carter? Is it Elijah Moore, Jameson Crowder? You know, who from the – Corey Davis. Can't forget Corey Davis. You know, who are you taking as your, your number one? I think he'll have the best fantasy, you know, statistical season. Not necessarily the best season. But – and then my third thing, I have a uh, I have a proposition for the Just Jets podcast. Oh. I believe that, that the, the new motto of the Just Jets podcast should be all gas, no gays. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if anyone's ever said that before. I'm sure someone tweeted it, so sorry if I'm taking your, your thunder, but I just really think all gas, no gays is hilarious. And I, <laughs> Love uh, it. I think the Just Jeff podcast uh, should be the official motto, all gas, no gays. Anyway, take care, Matt. You do a great job. Go Jets. See ya. Thank you. Really appreciate it, buddy. Um, love all the questions. Love the all oh, gas, no gaze. That's hysterical. Uh, with Sheldon Rankins, I agree with you. I think he is definitely under the radar signing. Uh, if he's 80% the player that he was with the Saints when he was healthy, the, the Jets got a good one because he can really get after the passer, man. And, and that's going to be fun watching him and Quinn in the middle and then John Franklin Myers and... Uh, or Vinnie Curry, or on the other side, Carl Lawson, just getting after it. They're gonna they're gonna rotate the defensive line a lot, and it's gonna be a fun unit. So I'm with you on that one. And even if he's not healthy, the Jets could still get by. But I I don't want to even put that out there. I just I I want to see a healthy Sheldon Rankins because I think he could be a beast up the middle. And as far as who I would take in fantasy, so I don't think Wilson because. It's probably a big ask for him to be what a, a top fifteen fantasy quarterback. That it's probably going to be tough. A year from now, two years from now, probably I would say hopefully in the conversation. I would absolutely hope so. The guy that I'm going to go with is the one who I, I don't necessarily know if they'll have an a thousand yard skill position player, but I think the one who has the best chance to go over a thousand is Corey Davis. So I'd probably say Corey. Uh, I think he's going to be used a ton in this offense. One, he's a contested catch guy. We know that Zach Wilson likes to push the ball down the field and let his receivers go up and get it. He can work over the middle. He's a good blocker, which just means that the Jets are going to have him out on the field a lot because that's what they like to do. Um, so I would say Corey Davis. Um, Mims, I don't think, is going to put up great fantasy numbers. I think he'll be a solid wide receiver, but I don't know if he has enough of that oomph to get over the top as someone that I would take first on this Jets team. Love Elijah Moore, but I'm worried about uh, Jamison Crowder taking reps away from him and seeing with Crowder. So I think those guys are a wash. Keelan Cole, I don't think is going to put up the production needed. So I would say probably Davis. I think Davis makes the most sense for you. Travis in Ohio is up next. He wants to talk about the Jets character. Let's hear from Travis. Hey, man! <laughs> Gets me every time. Travis from Ohio. Hey, buddy. Um, I called in like two weeks ago saying how there wasn't that much drama. I mean, other than the media hate and social media hate that we normally get. That's true. And then no cornerback and quarterback or kind of issues, but are controversial to anybody outside the fan base. But how about the recent stuff with Deshaun Watson and Richard Sherman, like, and, and those were off-season talking points, you know, and, like, should the Jets go get them and everything, and now look at all the S-I-H, S-I- <laughs> Close enough. S-H-I-T storm that they created. I'm sorry, I'm trying to censor myself. Anyway, um, and... Green Bean pointed out also, like last week, like we haven't had any rest all week, all week, off season. Because Joe's bringing in guys with character and team captains and leadership and all that stuff, culture change, you know? So, anyway, just to piggyback on that other thing, we dodged bullets, something guys or going after guys that we would normally do. And 
again, more proof that we're building this the right way. I mean, we've got the captain of the ship, and it, we should stay the course, in my opinion, because I've seen the way it works before, and it doesn't work. Not That's right. at all. So let's try it this way, man. Let's let's have character, guys, that don't get in trouble. I mean, the Patriots have been doing it for a long time. Mm. And, mm. Uh, God, I would hate to emulate them, but also I would like to win like them because, hell, if, I, if we would cheat and do everything possible <laughs> to win, like, I would go that route, too, and have... <clears throat> Six, seven, eight Super Bowls. It'd be nice. Nine, whatever. Anyway, love you, buddy. Hopefully, uh, people lay off sweet, sweet Mrs. Wilson. Agree. Anyway, keep on. Go Jets. Bye. Appreciate it as always, Travis. I don't know about the the Patriots and the character thing. I mean, sometimes yes, but they brought in some guys with not the best character over the years, and they've gotten a lot out of them. But they 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 haven't always been you know the choir boys in church. Um, character does matter. Uh, it does. And right now, it looks like the Jets are trending in a direction which is a good thing. You know, they haven't had a whole lot of off-season drama. We haven't had Sheldon Richardson driving over 100 miles an hour with weed in the car and a kid in the car and a gun or whatever whatever that story was. We haven't had Geno Smith getting punched in the face by a teammate. You haven't had Kellen Winslow Jr., even though I don't think he was still on the Jets when that story happened. Or he might have been, but the point, point remains the same. It seems like a good group of guys in this room. Uh, which is a good thing. It makes it easier for root, to root for the team and more likely for success. I agree. I agree with that for sure. Dom is calling in from Long Island. He wants to talk about the different en- energy. Hey, Matt. What's going on? It's Dom from Long Island. Just wanted to call in. Just watched last week's uh, Just Jets episode. It was awesome. You're doing a great job. Thank Still you. in the game. Thank you. Um, yeah, I just wanted to talk about this year because, you know, July 20th right now realistically we only have about I'd say a little less than three weeks till the first preseason game and I just I don't know man I'm super stoked I feel like you know you get Zach Wilson get him his first few you know few licks under center see how he throws the ball get him the feel for the game even though he's preseason but I just feel like especially at at the way last season went the anticipation for this season is kind of overwhelming. Especially last year, if you're trying to talk yourself into Darnold, trying to talk yourself into Gase. Actually, we all knew Gase was a nightmare. But anyways, you know what I'm saying. You got your friends chirping. They tell you Darnold oh, I know. sucks. You got to try to pull out the, you know, the little hints, the little stats that you can give out. Show Darnold's not terrible. But, with this year with Zach Wilson, I just feel like there's a different kind of vibe around the team. There's a different kind of energy. Sala comes and, you know, he smiles at people. It's wild. It's tremendous. But anyways, love what you're doing. Love the work you do here. Thank you. I'm just super stoked for this season. I'm ready to watch them knock the Giants out, go into the second week of the year, opening day. So hopefully they pull out a W. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Go Jets. Appreciate it. I understand why Jet fans, myself included, are so excited for this year because really with Adam Gates, you always knew in the back of your head, like this isn't this isn't gonna be a long term thing. Like you, you just knew. Come on. Even if you were trying to say, Oh, Adam Gates has a chance, in your heart of heart, you didn't really believe that. You just wanted it to be the case because this is your favorite team. And I understand. I get it. We've all been there before in, in different things. Um but this time does feel different because I really like the general manager. Sure. Have I agreed with every single move Joe Douglas has made? No. Have I agreed with most? Yes. And I think he has this team headed in the right direction. Robert Sala has never coached a game in the NFL. But I'd be lying if I said I wasn't super excited about his energy, his defensive philosophy, his team philosophy, all that stuff. The offense, we, we know that LaFleur hasn't necessarily been an offensive coordinator in this league, but he's been a part of one of the best offensive staffs in football for the last, what, 
five years plus and comes from a family who clearly knows the game as his brother in Green Bay has been doing a pretty damn good job. I'll tell you that much. Ulbrich, I think, aligns pretty well with Salah as we've seen in those, you know, Jets documentaries over the over the offseason here. I, I'm I'm excited for this Jets football team. Probably the most excited I've been for a Jets team in in a very long time. Like I'm I'm trying to sit here and, and realistically think. Like Darnold's rookie year, I, I guess maybe is your answer because I wanted to see the young quarterback play, but wasn't thrilled about Mike McCagnan and Todd Bowles, you know, leading the charge. So not the same level as it is right now. 2015 was a pleasant surprise, but like no one was really expecting that team to be good. 2011, maybe like 2011 might be the last time I was this excited going into a jet season. And that was a different kind of excitement because you had the back-to-back AFC championship games. You were proven that they were a legitimate Super Bowl contender, and they started that year eight and five. They were putting themselves in a good position, but we know what happened down the stretch there. So uh, I understand, Dom, and I agree with you, Dom. This this time does feel different, and the energy is palpable. That's for sure from Jet fans. Dallas is calling back in. He wants to talk offensive line this time. Yo, what's going on, Matt O'Leary? Dallas calling back from Texas. What up? Second time caller. I really appreciate you putting in that last video. Sure. That question on the I guess the free agent edge rushers that are going to be coming out. Um, I totally respect your opinion. I think it's pretty valid, especially that we got Carl Lawson. But next big question here, what, like, opportunity do you see for any possible, um, I don't want to say, like, O-line upgrades. Pretty much the same question, just for the O-linemen as well. Just because I don't, we don't really have, a, I don't want to say a ton of cap space dealt with old line in but what's your question on that and what's your input thank you Please. sure i love this question this is a really good question so to me i'll give you two guys in free agency and one resign. so i'll give you the resign first resigning morgan moses after one year if he performs to the level that we know he can signing him to a long-term deal to be the right tackle i'm okay with that tackles play our offensive linemen can play into their mid-30s at a high level uh, and if he continues to play well in 2020 this year, then I would resign him. Uh, Brandon Sheriff's going to be a play a free agent. Would you sign him to play right guard? Maybe he's going to be expensive, but we know Joe Douglas likes to prioritize the offensive line. Or Connor Williams is another guard from the Dallas Cowboys who is pretty damn good also. Um, so maybe you sign him and plug him in. So. Uh, I, I think those are the names that I would be looking at. Uh, there wasn't really anyone else who stuck out. I think Connor McGovern's going to stay. I think he'll be the starter if things go well this year, which I anticipate. Left side's done. Right tackle, if you're resigning Morse, Morgan Moses, is done. So I think you're really looking at guard. So I gave you probably the two bigger guard names on the market and probably the draft, if anything. So I think that's the direction they'll go on the offensive line. Jeremy is calling in. Our friend from Sacramento, California. Wants to talk about roster expansion. Hey, O'Leary, it's Jeremy from Sacramento. How are you? Are you getting a well-balanced diet? You know, you need a lot of, like, nutrition and everything. You sure. Not that all taken care of? Oh, sure. All right, good. Got my water um, Hey, I just wanted to ask um, you your opinion, if, um, if you expect any changes in the NFL roster sizes. Um, I see that um, some of the college football has announced that um, they're not going to, like, shut down um, – if they're and or cancel games or postpone games, they're just gonna but they're gonna allow expanded rosters. And um, I was just wondering if the Delta variant was really to keep spreading and it was to become a bigger issue. Do you think the NFL will take that strategy and that approach and just expand rosters and allow teams to play regardless of what you know of um, positive testing and just say hey field the team and um, make any adjustments to the roster size? Um, just your your take on that. Thanks. Yeah, so this past week we saw the NFL come out and with, you know with a pretty hard stance on vaccinations. So essentially, I'm sure you saw it, but just a brief overview uh, or recap, I guess, of it. They said that if a game cannot be made up due to you know a COVID issue with the team and it's because of an unvaccinated player, the team would have to forfeit the game. Uh, so they're very much so taking a hard stance and wanting their players to get vaccinated. 
And I think if you were to do anything outside of, you know, what their plans are with the, you know, vaccinating versus unvaccinated players, if you were to do anything, I would say maybe expand the practice squad and you can be able to carry more guys on the practice squad. And that way, if there is a reason why, like, hey, maybe a couple of players aren't going to be able to go, then you could bump up, you know, X amount of players, depending on what uh, what it is you need, depending on the position and have them ready to go. Almost like how uh, in the NHL they had a taxi squad during the year. Um, I think that's maybe your, your best comparison or uh, the Major League Baseball team last year uh, when they were playing uh, their shortened season in 2020. Uh, there wasn't really Minor League Baseball, but they were able to have, you know, like a like a B team sort of a thing. So I think that might be your best bet. So we'll see. But yeah, NFL really seems to be taking a strong stance with it and they don't want to have to make up games because players are, you know, spreading COVID around. So if this, as Jeremy says, if this Delta variant is, you know, going to be a really big deal coming up for this upcoming season, well, NFL is probably going to need more of their players to get vaccinated. They have a lot, but the the numbers are going to have to continue to go up. I think Um, Matt from Ohio is up next. He wants to talk some jet superlatives. This is a fun one. Hey, Matt, this is also Matt uh, from Ohio, huge jets fan. Big fan of your show. Uh, Wanted to phone in with a question about the New York Jets superlatives for this year. So I got a few here. Want to see if you agreed at all. And if you don't, uh, please list the player that you do agree with if possible. I got a few here, so I'll run through it for you. Okay. So first is most underrated player. Um, I have JFM on here. I think he's going to have a really good year. That's a good one. Or fully thought Kasi. I couldn't decide, but if I had to decide, I'd go JFM for that. I have most overrated player as next superlative. This I went bless Austin. Um, I don't even think he's going to win that number two cornerback spot, but okay. uh, let me know your thoughts on that. Uh, next superlative was wild card. Uh, this is I went Jubari Zuniga for this just because you don't – we never mm. saw him play. That's um, fair. Kind of had a red shirt year last year. I think he got a handful of plays. Uh, for most improved player, I put Quinn and Williams just because they're switching to a 4-3. Um, he's going to be able to attack a little more, and he's got Lawson on that side, plus Sheldon Rankin. So that defensive line is loaded. Um, for best offseason signings, I put Lawson. This one to me was pretty obvious. Yep. Um, I think he's really good in that Salah defense. I put, for next one, most productive draft pick. This one was hard. I feel like everyone's going to say a lot more. I put AVT. Uh, mm. I think that's a safe pick there. Uh, a little hard to judge uh, what linemen are, as far as stats are concerned, but he's going to be a rock at that position. Uh, and going off of that, I put bounce back year. Um, I think McGovern next to ADT is going to have a bounce back year. Um, I don't think he was as bad as what people said about him. So curious to see your thoughts on that one. Uh, this one I put next one I put most surprising performance, good or bad. This I put Sheldon Rankins. Um, I just think he's going to be a really, really good free agent addition. And I feel like a little, some people are sleeping on him a little bit. So I think he's going to be really good next to, um, Quinn Williams. Next one, I put training camp star. I put I put a lot more for this one. Um, mm. I think this is one that's going to be pretty obvious, but there's always some guys that surprise and training camp look really good. And he, so far, he's looked really well in OTAs. And then last uh, but not least, MVP. I just put Makai Becton. Uh, when he's healthy, he's he's probably the best player on this team. Uh, and if he stays healthy, which is a big if, I think he'll be MVP. Um, but yeah, let me know if if you agree with all those, if you disagree with all those. Um, but yeah, thanks for having me in my call and go Jets. I really, I think you were spot on with a lot of them. I, I agree with a lot of them, but I'm going to give you some different answers as well. Underrated, I'm right there. J- John Franklin Myers, I think, is is up there. Uh, overrated, bless, good answer. Berrios, depending on which fans you talk to. Um, and just based on how Jets fans think of him, Braden Mann, I think he's going to get better. I'm not saying that he's, he's a bad player by any stretch of imagination, but he was like the 20th best punter last year and some fans thought of him as like the second coming in year one again someone who could absolutely get better i'm not saying you know sell your brain man stock he just wasn't as good as what jet fans really thought he was in his rookie year uh wild card i'm gonna go ashton davis actually i think that we'll see if he is a capable replacement for marcus may going forward if they decide to move on from Marcus May or if this guy could even just be a starter, what his deal is. So I'm going to go Davis there. Most improved, I'm going to say Bryce Hall. Not that he was bad last year, but I just think he's going to take a step forward and really solidify himself as being a you know solid starting outside corner. 
best signing, I'm going to agree, Carl Lawson, uh, I think is definitely the best signing. Most productive draft pick, uh, I think you have a good answer with Elijah Vera Tucker. I'm going to go Zach Wilson, though. I don't know if that's necessarily the cop-out answer, but I, I think that would... Be, best case scenario would be Zach Wilson for the New York Jets if he's the most productive uh, draft pick here. Bounce back, McGovern's a great answer. I'm going to also throw in Chris Herndon into the mix because I'm not getting rid of that stock just yet. Most surprising performance, it's not surprising to me or maybe you know some other fans who really follow him, but I think to the... I don't want to say casual, but just, just some people are maybe just sleeping on him. Vinny Curry, I think, is going to have a really, really nice role on this team as a role player. Again, he's not going to play every single snap, but I think in passing situations, I think we'll be surprised to see him you know, getting after the quarterback a little bit. Training camp star, I'm going to agree with you and say Elijah Moore. And for MVP, I'm going to go Quinn and Williams. But really cool question. That was a lot of fun to go through. And uh, let us know in the comments if you're watching this or if you're listening in podcast form, tweet it at me. I'm at O'Leary NY and let me know your choices for these awards. Ben in New Jersey's up next and he wants to talk about Greg Matt. What's up, Matt? It's Ben from Jersey. Hey, Ben. It's a sad day in Jetland. and for calling on Thursday and unfortunately our passing game coordinator, Greg Knapp, has succumbed to his injuries sustained in the motorcycling accident. It's a sad day for the Jets and the NFL, but this this season is for him. We we should we gotta honor this man, put his name on our jerseys. Agree. Do something to honor him because this is truly devastating and so unfortunate. Respected figure. I, I'm still in shock. It's really hard to believe that this happened, and the whole team. Play, play extra hard for him every day and as, all, as for the rest of us pray for his family and everyone that he and all of his loved ones because they're sure they're surely going through a ton right now absolutely that's all i have to say and as always go Jets. ben i think you said it great um it's first and foremost thoughts are with the nap family uh, awful 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 situation it's sad it's really sad i i feel for them i feel for the team you know losing a a coach and you know someone a co-worker just to a tragedy like that it's just it's awful and he what a career he had to an underrated career was the offensive coordinator on a really really good san francisco 49ers team worked with michael vick and that Falcons offense during the prime years, like 04, 05, Michael Vick, we're talking. Uh, where else did he go after that? He was with the Raiders for a little bit. Um, and then he worked with Denver. He was Peyton Manning's quarterback coach. He was a quarterback coach for Matt Ryan. Like, this is a really well known and well respected guy in the NFL and just taken away too soon. Uh, I really think they should put uh, a patch on their, on their jersey, like his initials, maybe a GK, something like that. I think that would be a really nice gesture. Uh, well said, though, Ben. Couldn't have said it any better myself. We're going to go to Tommy in Virginia, who wants to get into the offense a little bit. Hey, Matt. Uh, my last thought didn't go through, but it's Tommy from Virginia. So, my question was like, so we got like four or five like solid receivers on the uh, roster. So, I'm wondering, like, how are they all going to be incorporated into the offense? That's really my question. Um yeah, thank you. Yeah, um, good question. I think they're going to spread the ball around a lot. So I don't think it's going to be necessarily like, oh, my God, they're going to have a 1,200-yard receiver, and then like their number two receiver is going to be like 700, and there's going to be like a huge gap. I think there's a chance that you have two guys in like the eight 900 range. I have both uh, Mims. And Dave, I have Davis and Mims right around that eight to nine hundred yard. Probably Davis with the edge at around. I'll put him at nine fifty, roughly. I think he has a chance for a thousand. Um, I think we're gonna see more and Crowder with a little bit less, maybe in that five hundred to seven hundred yard range, because I think they'll split yards from each other up because they're kind of a similar role here. Uh, and then I, I like Cole a lot. I, I think Keelan Cole is gonna be really good. Uh, and he could come in and, you know, obviously we were hoping there's no injuries, but if there is, I would feel comfortable with him and coming in and having to play on the outside. 
Uh, it's a heck of a lot better than, you know, having to watch Hogan play on the outside or, you know, any of the Smiths or Berrios and stuff like that. So uh, I'm excited about this wide receiver room. I think they're five deep and I think they're going to be pretty damn good, especially if they all stay healthy too. Uh, next up is James in New Jersey. Let's get into it, James. Matt, what's going on, man? What's Good up? Boy, James from New Jersey, what's going on? Um, thank you for listening to my voice message last week. I know sure. I just realized it was choppy. I didn't know that, but I'm glad you were able to get my mess- like, understand the, my question from my message last week. Um, this week, man, obviously, our, the, the passing game specialist passed away, Greg Knapp, which is very bad. Um, feels like a curse, actually. It just seems like nothing can ever go the Jets' way. But there still has to be some positivity out of this. Not positively out of a, a death, but there should be some type of way where we can overcome this adversity. Bob Sala said that he embraced adversity, so this is going to be a true test. Yes. Um, but the question that I'm trying to ask in this message, do you think that the Jets will hire some other form of passing game a specialist or coordinator uh, to help or a quarterback coach to help with Zach Wilson and the QBs, or do you think there's going to be more uh, of an assist uh, of a of a added responsibility onto Mike LaFleur or I think it was a uh, Rob Calabrese, so I think he's the quarterback coach, whoever the case may be, or do you think we'll hire someone else to pick up their responsibility that Greg Knapp was supposed to be? Let me know what you think, man. Thank you so much for listening. I hope this doesn't uh, get scattered off and doesn't disconnect, and there's always Jets. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you for calling in. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's awful what happened to Coach Knapp. Um, I think they're going to just roll with the, the coaching staff they have. I'd be surprised if they made another hire at this point. Uh, and I think it's going to be on uh, LaFleur, as the offensive coordinator, to really be the one uh, overseeing that. Not every single you know, coaching staff necessarily has a passing game coordinator. Uh, so I, I'd be surprised if they filled that position now at this point. I think they're just going to roll into this year with what they have, uh, to be honest with you. Next up is Nick in New Jersey. He wants to talk about the skill position players. Hey, Matt O'Leary. What Nick up? from New Jersey. I'm just calling in because I was think, just thinking about all these new position guys, skill position guys we got in now. You know, we got so many in. We got rookies. Second year guys, veterans, you know, let's look at it. You know, we have how many on the outside? You have Corey Davis as an outside receiver, and hopefully Denzel Mins slips in as the number two outside receiver, and Keelan Cole. I don't mind if those two go back and forth. And then you look at the slot, you have starting Jamison Crowder, Elijah Moore on the other side of him, or will take over. And then Braxton Berrios, who, I mean, has a decent, good connection with Zach Wilson. I don't expect to see him on the field much if. I hope we don't. Um, and then you look at running back. We got a lot of young guys and one veteran, as well as the receivers. You know, we have Tevin Coleman, Michael P. Ryan. You know, we, we know all the players. Michael Carter I'm most excited about. Um, this is pretty exciting. You know, we have guys that are going to play right now, which is outstanding. Jamison Crowder and Corey Davis and Tevin Coleman. All veterans in this league all had success. You know, Tevin Coleman has played in this system with three different teams. That's true. So he's going to be the guy to bring that. So I, this is great. And then you look at the offensive line with the young talent of ABT, Mekhi Beckton, and then the old talent with McGovern, um, the Van Roten, and Morgan Moses, who provides a lot out there, too, on a one-year deal. But... Even if a lot of these guys move on in the next two years, we have all this young talent that's ready to move up. This is a position I want to point out that the New York Jets have never been in. You know, I wish we could have gotten Elijah Moore in the first round, you know, just to get that fifth-year option because I'm worried about him. He's going to be looking for money. You know, I know he hasn't touched the field yet, but the excitement on him is, I think, a little surreal. You know, I think we're just not used to seeing someone so explosive in a Jets uniform. So, um... Matt, let me know what you think about all these weapons moving forward, who you think is going to break out this year, if you want to pick out a veteran and a rookie to break out. You know, the, I think an easy rookie to break out, Elijah Moore, but, I mean, mm. I don't know if you think Michael Carter is going to get more of the reps, and out of the veterans, maybe Jamison Crowder surprises us, or Braxton Berrios. I have no idea Zach is going to be throwing to everybody. It's so exciting. 
I can't wait to be at the Patriots and Jet game, you know? I'm going to get my ticket to that soon. And awesome. Through Jake Ashman, from parts unknown, I'm getting that jersey. So, you Love know, it. let's start getting the hype train going for the New York Jets. We finally got offense. So let's go Jets. Love it. Absolutely love the energy in that one. And I agree with you. Look at the skill position group. It's different. And I know there's no, like, absolute budding star where it's like, oh, my God, this is a clear-cut top 10 guy at the position. But it's just solid from top to bottom at the wide receiver group specifically. Running back room uh, on paper probably isn't great, but I think it's going to be fine. I should probably I – f- I don't know if I phrased that the right way. It's not going to be looked at around the league. There we go. As one of the better units in football. But when you look at the skill set of what Carter can do and what Ty Johnson can do, I think the two of them are going to be really good in this offense. Coleman, I think, is, you know, just brings the veteran presence. He knows the offense in and out. So I think he's going to really show them the ropes. Those three I expect to really lead the way from the running back position. And it's hard for me to say which rookie is going to be a breakout guy because I think you're going to really the first four guys they picked are going to have really key roles to this team in this offense. Wilson's going to start. Elijah Vera Tucker is going to start. Michael Carter very well could be a starter, but that's going to be, my guess, a rotational role, which is fine. And Elijah Moore probably could start if need be, but I have no idea because they have Jamison Crowder right now, who is a really damn good slot receiver. So they have an abundance at the wide receiver position right now, which is never a bad thing, especially when you look at how the last couple of years went with this uh, with this group. So I'm not complaining about that. That's for damn sure. Nick, I'm with you, though. Skill position is going to be fun. Brandon from Texas is up next. He wants to talk Joe Douglas. Let's do it, man. Hey, Matty. It's Brandon from Dallas. What's up, dude? Uh, you know, just want to first and foremost say, you know, you're doing a great job, man. All your content has been fantastic, on par. We don't agree on everything, but that's, you know, that's the beauty of it. That's okay. Um, just wanted to just speak on Joe Douglas and what he's done so far. Uh, you know, this season's putting us in position to really have a lot of flexibility in the future. I love what he's done with the first uh, four or five picks in this draft um, uh, and, you know, and, and free agency as well. And uh, and considering what we'll probably need next year, corner maybe, uh, another edge presence, uh, maybe another running back. I'm not sure about that, but maybe, uh, depending on how uh, Michael Carter pans out, although I think he's going to be great. Um, okay. But I just really love the way uh, the organization is going. And there's a vibe right now and an energy surrounding the Jets. And we just got to ride that wave. So I just wanted to mention that. Keep doing keep doing you, man. You're doing great. And, uh, you know, be blessed. One. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for calling in and checking in with us. I really like – I'm with you. I, I agree – that this team is headed in the right direction, and it's really because of Douglas's vision. I thought he had a really good draft his first year. I thought he had a really good draft this year, even better one in 2021. And I really love the value. You mentioned Michael Carter by name, so that really sticks out. I really, really love that value in the fourth round. I think he's going to be tremendous on this team. Going forward, yeah, they're, they're going to need some more offensive line help, I, I, I think, if they want to continue to get that group better. They're, they may very well need a tight end, depending on what happens with Chris Herndon this year. Corner, I, I think, is definitely going to be a need going forward, but they have a ton of draft capital to make that stuff happen You know, in, in the upcoming draft, and they'll have money to spend in for agency. This team, I'll say it again, there's really no reason to believe that the Jets can't make the playoffs in 2022. Is it, I, I would probably say unlikely this year, and I know I had a video this past week saying you know how the Jets could do it, not necessarily saying that's what I necessarily think is going to happen, but there's there's a world where if things 100% break right for the Jets, maybe they win 10 games. Maybe they do, and that'd be awesome. They'd prove a lot of people wrong. They'd go from you know a two-win team to a 10-win team, but uh, realistically, I think if they win seven or eight games, that's that's a big step forward, and I'm just excited to like not be rooting for losses down the stretch and be like, okay, I want to come in, and I don't care if, I don't know, going into the, the last game of the year, let's say they're seven and nine at that point, then you could either root for, you could root for a win and be like, for like, let's go, man. A divisional opponent, right? Don't they end their season against the Bills? Let's see Zach Wilson ball out and put up big numbers against the divisional opponent and get a big win against a good team. Let's do it. I don't care. At that point, you don't care about the draft pick. What's the difference? 
I just you're not going to be tanking in the top five. I don't think this team's going to have a top 10 pick this year. I really don't. I think they're picking maybe somewhere around 12 to 15, 16 maybe in that range, somewhere in the middle of the first round, which that's fine. And don't forget, they have another pick from Seattle too. And they have the Carolina second round pick. So they're going to have a bunch of picks in the first two rounds. Got to love it. Got to love it. Last one, John from Staten Island. We're going to get into Greg Knapp some more. Hey, Matt. It's uh, John from Staten Island again. Um, I'd like to talk about Greg Knapp and um, not only the, the emotional loss, but uh, um, the wisdom that might have been lost on him being departed now. And I was wondering if you think maybe the Jets could bring in someone like Peyton Manning for a couple of weeks just to coach up our quarterback. Mm. Uh, let me know what you think. Go Jets. Show. Bye. I think they're really going to stick with uh, – I think it's going to be heavy on the floor. Um, I think he's going to be doing a, a ton of work. I'd be very surprised if they paid someone like that to come in and do it, um, especially because I don't I don't think Manning really has a connection with the floor or Sal or anything, and he's got a pretty good gig what he's doing now. So I don't expect to see him come, but uh, I think it's going to be really on the staff who's here now. I think it's going to be on their shoulders. So that's going to do it on episode number 76. Got through a lot. Training camp started talking about the storylines from there. The impact of losing Brian Poole and answered all your voicemails. Excited to get into it next week. Football is back. And also, before I go, just wanted to mention that tomorrow, the Talking Jets panel is back. So if you're not subbed up to Ryan from Jets Talk 24-7, go do that because we're going to be back and we're doing videos there every Tuesday streaming live from 8 to 10. And, of course, Green Bean's on there, too. You should know these guys. So sub up to Ryan and Green Bean if you haven't already. And uh, that's going to do it for me. I'm Matt O'Leary, and I'll talk to you next time.